In this video, we're going to use the general purpose pinwheel block from our previous video to create two new special purpose blocks, one for creating an asterisk and one for creating a polygon. If you played around with your pinwheel block in the last video, you may have stumbled upon some inputs that will allow you to draw an asterisk or even a polygon. I actually happened to draw a polygon in the last video by changing one of the inputs. So we want to use our pinwheel block that we created to create the more specialized asterisk block inside of it. Before I actually start making the block, I want to think about what the inputs might be in order to create an asterisk. If you look at the asterisk, there's no polygon visible within the lines or within the branches. So what that means is that when you back up, you're backing up the entire length of the size of the pinwheel. So for example, if I do pinwheel branches 5, size 80, backup 80, when I draw this, it shouldn't draw any polygon. It should just look like an asterisk. So we want our backup to be equal to our size in order to draw an asterisk. And on the other hand, when we want to draw a polygon, we don't want our block to back up at all. So if I clear it and I make the backup 0, when I run it, it's going to draw a polygon with that many sides. Now that we've kind of discussed what the inputs are going to look like for an asterisk and a polygon, let's go ahead and make a block for asterisk. I'm going to right click in the scripting area and make a block. And once again, it's going to be a command block and it's going to be in the motion palette and it's named asterisk. Also, I'm going to add the title text for the entire block from here. So branches and branch length. Don't worry, we could add the inputs later. So I'm going to hit OK. And there's my block, it's been created, but now it needs some areas for inputs. So right after branches, I want to take in the number of branches. So I could type in number of branches or just branches as the input. And that's going to be the number of spikes coming out of the middle for the asterisk. And for branch length, I'm going to type in length. And that's going to be my input for this asterisk to determine how long each line should be, each one of these spikes. So now I could actually use my pinwheel block inside of my asterisk block by putting it inside the block editor for asterisk. And now in 2B, it says to fill in the three inputs to pinwheel so that it correctly draws an asterisk. So we want to make sure that our branches equals the number of branches that we have here in the input. So I'm going to drag over that variable into the branches area. So that way, whatever the person types in, in, in the asterisk block in branches will get put inside of this pinwheel block. For size, that's going to be the branch length. So I'm going to bring over this length, and that's going to determine how long the branch length is. And now for backup, we want to back up the entire length so that we don't create a pinwheel. Now when I hit apply, if I actually drag in my asterisk block and run it, with let's say five branches and a branch length of 99, if I clear the stage and then draw it, it should draw a perfect asterisk with five branches. Now in number three, we want to use the same kind of procedure to write a polygon block that uses pinwheel inside of that block. So to do that, I'm going to right click in the scripting area and I'm going to make a block that I'm going to name polygon. And the polygon should have a number of sides and the side length also. Now that I got all the title text out of the way, I'm going to put that in the motion palette and I'm going to, let's see, bring in some inputs. So the number of sides is going to be an input. I'm going to name that as sides. And for the side length, I'm just going to name that length. Once again, I'm going to bring in my pinwheel block. I'm going to attach it to this polygon block. And for branches, that's going to be the number of sides. And for size, that's going to be the length of the side. And for backup, as we saw just before, when we want to create a polygon, we don't want to back up at all. Otherwise, that creates a pinwheel or an asterisk. So I'm going to put in 0 for backup. And when I hit apply, this should be the code for drawing a polygon. I'm going to clear the stage. I'm going to try a five-sided polygon with a length of a side length of 80. And that looks great. Let's try eight sides with a side length of 80. Let me clear the stage. And that is perfect. It's an octagon. 
What we've just done in these two examples for making an asterisk block and a polygon block is something known as abstraction, which is probably the most important concept in computer science. And there is no simple definition, but I'm going to try to give you guys a simple explanation of what abstraction is. In this specific scenario, it tells us that abstraction means using a more general block, which was the pinwheel block, to create two new specific blocks, which were the asterisk and the polygon blocks. There are other kinds of abstraction, and we'll point them out as they come up. One other type of abstraction is the removal of details. So a good example of this is if you ever have a car, you have to take it to get an oil change. So when you tell one of your friends, hey, I got to get an oil change, they know exactly what that means. You don't have to tell them, hey, I'm going to go to the car, I'm going to turn it on, I'm going to drive 14.3 miles to the gas station, I'm going to give the keys to the person, the mechanic named Al, and I'm going to get an oil change, which requires them to open up the hood, to check the oil, to lift up the car. All those details are left out. All you do is say, hey, I got to get an oil change. And the person understands what you're doing. That is an example of abstraction because we're taking all of those details and removing them and just leaving behind the general idea of what we're doing. We did the exact same thing in code over here. When we created the asterisk block and the polygon block, we didn't talk about the pinwheel at all. We didn't say how we're using the pinwheel block because all of that, all of those details are abstracted away from the user. All someone has to do to create an asterisk is drag in the asterisk block, put in some inputs, and it works perfectly. They don't have to know exactly what's going on under the hood and that it's using a different pinwheel block. Same thing with polygon. With polygon, the user just chooses the number of sides and the side length, and they don't have to know exactly how the pinwheel block works because all of that information, all of that detail is abstracted. In computer science, if you find yourself copying code from one place to another or reusing blocks, those are examples of abstraction because we're using more general blocks to accomplish a more specific task. In number four, it says to look inside of the pinwheel block to see how we're using it inside of Polygon. And we're going to see that there are steps that we don't really need to take for making a polygon. It tells you to write another version of Polygon that's built directly from the primitive blocks, which are the move, the turn, the repeat blocks, and so on, without using the pinwheel block. The reason for that is because the pinwheel block has a backup of zero, so we actually don't even need those steps. What I'm going to do is copy over the code for pinwheel and bring it over to the block editor for Polygon. And I'm going to remove the parts where we back up, because when we make a polygon, we don't have to back up at all. So in this case, I'm going to remove the move negative 1 times the absolute value of backup steps. So let's delete that by right-clicking on it and hitting delete. And now we have two weight blocks in a row. I'm going to delete one of those also. Now instead of using the number of branches, which relies on the pinwheel block, I'm actually going to remove that and put in the number of sides. That's how many times we have to repeat this. Also, when we turn, we're going to do 360 divided by the number of sides degrees, just like we did a couple of videos back. I can remove the number of branches block because we don't need those reporters anymore. And for move size steps, I'm actually going to remove that and put in the length. So now we've simplified our polygon block. This is basically everything inside of this repeat was inside of the pinwheel block, but we had a backup, and now we don't need that anymore. So we can remove this, and we can attach this to our polygon block, and it should still work the same. To test it out, I'm going to hit Apply, I'm going to hit OK, and then I'm going to hit the polygon block again. And it looks like it just drew over the same octagon that I drew before. So let me clear the stage, let me see if it draws a new octagon, and it looks good. Let me try four sides, so it should draw a square. So I want to make sure that my turn, my turning degrees are perfect, and that looks good. Let me actually test out the side length. If I make this 90, it should make a slightly larger square. Great. If I make it 100, and I draw around it, it should draw a square that's a little bit bigger than the 91. And it looks like it works perfectly. So we removed our pinwheel block, and we took what was inside of pinwheel, and we added it to the polygon block. And then we removed backup because that wasn't necessary. And that's how we simplified the polygon block. There are a few challenges if you found this pretty easy. So check out if there's time or the take it further challenge. 
that Take It Further A challenge is a lot of fun and B is a little bit more difficult. So make sure you try those out on your own and I'll see you guys in the next video.